I think art is my number one career right now. And art is the whole world to me right now. It's, it's everything to me. Every time I'm involved in art, I submerge myself in art. I literally get lost in there. Like everything for a few seconds ceases to matter. <laughs> it's just art. It's just the paper and I, and I and the paper. <laughs> Flat Art is a public arts festival that takes place in our city. It's really about bringing art into public spaces. So really like non-traditional art spaces outside of the gallery, outside of the museum, into the city. Because a lot of people don't go to galleries. Uh, we don't have very many in our city, number one. Uh, I think number two as well, people just don't know very much about art because you don't get to interact with art very much. And so we think that it's important that, you know, if galleries maybe seem inaccessible for people or people just don't know about them, they should still have other ways of experiencing art. My practice is in origami mainly, but I've had so many layers of experiences so many layers of different um, art forms that I've been interacting with. And in one way or another, these layers have created a wholesome expression of, of what we see today in my practice. Origami is, is a very powerful tool. It's not just an aesthetic, it's functional. It comes to life. The idea and what we said to the artists in the beginning when we had, we had a call, but what we said was that it was going to be 12 month process, educate, kind of like learning, unlearning um, process that then leads up to the festival. Kla art was one of those things that I applied for and even forgot about it because I just used to rejection emails. Like it's just the routine. Apply, get rejected, apply, get rejected. And at one point, um, the thought of you're not good enough keeps coming through. But then I remember when I saw the email, I I sort of thought, no, this must be to a wrong person. This is not for me. And when I confirmed that it was actually true, ah, I was just happy. <laughs> a lot of my practice has evolved around communities. So for me, working with community is, is, is more like us all putting together our different energies, the different layers of our uniquenesses together to create something wholesome. For this particular project, I chose to work with children. The Milege kids are lots of children in different places that convene together at the Milege homestead to immerse in different art forms and learn from each other and share and have important conversations on, on different art forms. So we came together and started the project with the children. My artistic journey started as a child and thanks to my parents I was exposed to lots of art forms and I like working with children because I was given the opportunity to, to experience art as a child so I felt the need later on in life to do the same thing for children. <laughs> My name is Katesi Jacqueline Kalange and I am a visual artist. I would like the community to look at my work and be reminded of what we once held unto, of what helped us to coexist, such that in the next 50 years, when someone looks at this piece, they are reminded, they are brought back home. In my art practice, I choose to specialize in weaving and welding while sculpting because to me I feel this define who I am. I grew up seeing my grandmother weaving and right from my childhood I've been embraced with the weaving products. I love the art in it and I feel as an artist who is aiming at being a traditional archive of information I feel we as a country and we as Africa have beautiful techniques that need to be preserved for the future generations. So right here where you are is my studio. It's called Mad Welders. It's where I am executing my work. I was inspired by Mondia Waitei, which is locally known as Omulondo. 
Omlondo is a common herb that has been locally consumed in Uganda, most especially by the adolescents and the male gender. We can see the Omlondo uh, broken down into um, smaller pieces. So I'm super excited and I can't wait to show you what comes out. Something that's really great that you'll see even in the artists that you've spotlighted is just how really used the festival um, to push themselves in really interesting ways. So, you know, you see Katessi working. I mean, one of the amazing things about her work is the scale, right, that she, that she uses, but then how she also was playing around with material. These are things that she maybe hadn't done in this way before, but was using the festival as a platform to do that. Also really, ideally, um, a platform for the next step as well. So for each of the artists, that it's this transformative experience um, for whatever comes next. If I looked at, it's because I've been moving for the last five weeks. And I must say, I love how the whole vibe of weaving is flowing. And um, right outside here, we are doing finishing, just like you can see. So let me take you around and show you more pieces. This here is another one of my big creation, the big uh, installation piece. So this is one of the longitudinal pieces. They are yet to be um, completed with a process called finishing. So far, so good. I'm uh, super duper excited. It's really in incredible to see just the commitment and um, how they were able to bring these different ideas and really like just not give up on the process and make such work that was beyond, I think, what we could have hoped for. While at residency in Jakarta, which was part of Kla Art, I picked inspiration from peacock feathers and put this together. This piece is uh, still in process, Birabi's kaleidoscope. Um, it's taken me two years to achieve this. And just to give you a background to how hectic these two years have been, every piece started out like this. And when this is completed, it gets rolled up. The paper is quite flexible, as you can see. It's a very flexible material, and that's why I chose to use paper. It's, it's the easiest way to, to create movement and to flex with the material as I work. My name is Aloka Trevor, also known as Aloka Aloka. I'm trying to do my installation right now and um, it comes off from the work I've called uh, Ready for Export. So Ready for Export basically talks about the mass migration of laborers, how young people normally move out of the country to outside countries to look for employment opportunities, greener pastures. So I made replicas of gold bars. They are made from wood. I'm trying to compare these, all these professions and talents to these minerals, because somehow we've always been thinking that somehow the continent is only exploited of minerals, but um, in my project I say that you are also being exploited of professions and talent. So I'm assuming all these cargo boxes have these uh, objects that symbolize all these professions and talents stacked into them and ready for export. For me, making art makes me happy. It's the only thing I think I can do. So I wake up every morning to do art. And if someone appreciates it or someone is connected to the piece of art I've created, then I'm like, OK, there's something I'm doing. My work is uh, basically in the mediums of uh, printing plates, aluminum printing plates and copper wires and other phone materials. Uh, this piece uh, is basically trying to put together life and a bullet. I'm trying to investigate the, the worth of a bullet and the worth of life. 
This piece was inspired by the recent happenings, which saw one of the presidential candidates uh, being arrested and it sparked off a protest in the city. This protest uh, affected me greatly where I'm staying, at my place, whereby I was tear aghast at my place. Uh, at some point I thought they were, I, I was going to be shot. The name of the piece is called Muawa, which can loosely be translated in Luganda as uh, doing something irresponsibly or without care or just recklessly. We're now carrying the Birabi's kaleidoscope to Banda where it's to be exhibited at a warehouse. I like this positioning of the warehouse because um, it's surrounded by a community of recyclers and just adjacent to it on the other side of the road is um, Chambogo University and Navisunsa Girls, which are pretty much the cream de la cream of education in Uganda. Yeah, this is how far we've come as a team, and it's been an exhausting journey. We are really exhausted, but it's been an exciting one. It's come with a lot of experimentation. It's come with a lot of memory, and um, just looking back into childhood and rekindling the excitement that came with playing around with a kaleidoscope. I can't wait to show this to the public. So right in front of you is one of my costumes because just like I shared with you, I am making an installation. So by installation, I have a sculpture piece as well as outfits that I am going to put on on that day of launching during the exhibition and I will have a performance. I'm excited. I can't wait for people to see the magic that I'm having to unveil. I think there was expectation from everyone, but there's a, there was a difference between the ones who you kind of could see little glimpses of what they were doing, and then for some other artists, you almost didn't know what they would be doing, and so it was also a really nice surprise. So it's interesting when you don't really know what it is that you're going to see. it had been such a long process it was the sense of relief <laughs> that oh we made it we actually got this far we have put on a festival like that in itself was a reward we have programs we have people showing up we have work that you can see and experience and touch and walk through and we have a whole community of people that are also interacting with the work and um, uh, forming relationships with the artists. Like all of those things I think were, yeah, really wonderful to experience after so long. Like so, so long. Rachi Mutusala! Rachi! Rachi Mutuodona! I'm thrilled that this all went down well. It has really been such a long journey. I have been transformed and reborn throughout this entire process. And I must say, I'll forever be a champion of Mother Nature, preaching to the entire public to join into this activism of protecting our environment because it all starts with me and you. My environment! My responsibility! My environment! My responsibility! I've done lots of exhibitions, but guess what? I do them for people. So for the first time, I was at the forefront, which had never happened. And away from the excitement, I was a bit nervous. Um, I was very scared about what people would think about the work too. And I was shocked that the reviews, the comments, the feedback was, was very good. It was very encouraging. It was very promising and I felt the emotion of a parent and the emotion of a teacher. It's very exciting to, to create work and people want to learn from your work. Yeah, I think as a teacher that's, that's very fulfilling. I want to use artwork to nurture communities, to nurture people, but particularly to nurture children because I'm adding so many other layers of, of extra skills that would make the children wholesome. I think the festival was a platform for artists to be able to express themselves um, during a time where there was a lot to express um, and then ideally also for the audience as 
seed that's sown in terms of how you get to experience your city and what you get to see and you know the importance of getting to see things that take you outside of the daily and make you think differently and connect differently. Yeah.